Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on the MSVA e-bike. This time we're going to be having a look at actually registering and applying for the MSVA, which is the stage after the VIN number, which is the last video, so go check that out if you haven't seen it already. You'll see how you need to do the VIN number first before you can get on with this, because um, it requires that as part of the form. But anyway, let's get into it and have a look at what you need to do. Now, I did actually film this about a month earlier, um, but it turns out the audio wasn't great and the microphone wasn't connected properly, so it was all kind of crackly. So I'm re-recording it a little bit later. Now, the first section on the form is just some details about yourself, so name, address, number, and email. And the email is important because you do get information from the DVLA about the test um, and the process, so make sure you get that right. Um, else you're not going to get the proper communication and then it moves on to the test center now you need to be careful with this because not all centers offer two-wheeled vehicle testing some only do three or four-wheeled vehicles which is kind of weird because you think if it's like a four-wheeled vehicle they just use half the track but they don't and the one nearest me is one of those it's one of the only ones in the country actually um, and they don't do two-wheeled vehicles. So I've had to travel a little bit further or uh, put down an option that's a little bit further um, in order to get one that does two-wheeled vehicles. But once you've got that, um, you have to make a first and a second choice, I guess, in case one of them is not available. Next is the VIN number, which obviously you will need prior to this. And um, that's how they link the application to the particular vehicle that you are registering. So again, make sure you get that right. And then we're on to the make and model of the vehicle, which is where you can get a bit creative and pretty much put anything. Um, I've gone for the Apollo E3, um, E3 being electric and 3 being my third e-bike. And Apollo, I just like the sound of it. Um, I was trying to think of um, a name and that's what came to mind. Um, I'm sure there were plenty of other even better names out there. Um, if you've got any ideas, put them in the comments, so I'd just be interested to see. But yeah, that's what I've gone through um, with this one. Now, before I continue, I'll just mention that there is another document, um, which is meant to be like a kind of guide for what to put down as the answer to some of these. Um, but yeah, it's weird how it kind of only answers some of the questions. It doesn't go through everything, um, but it does help out um, and help me out with some of the questions later on that are a bit more ambiguous. Anyway, so next we get on to the type of vehicle and obviously the one I'm building is a moped. Um, it's not a low powered moped. That's one that's between 250 watts and a kilowatt, I believe, um, but it's still kind of like a normal bike, um, that kind of range. So if you're building a 1000 watt bike, first of all, just build an 8000 watt one. It's so much better, <laughs> um, but yeah. This is a moped, so if you're doing something similar to me, put down moped and you'll be absolutely fine. Moving on, is the vehicle designed to carry goods? Um, I don't really know what this means. I'm guessing it means does it have like panniers or does it have um, like a box on it or something? Um, I just put no because mine doesn't. It's just meant to carry me. Um, and then obviously number of wheels. Um, moped only um i guess that's because if you had a three-wheeled vehicle that would be a tricycle but i'm not quite sure you can have a three-wheeled moped anyway um which side of the vehicle is psycho on well this doesn't have a side cart so i just left that blank i didn't tick either of them um and that seems to have been fine now we get on to vehicle category which is a bit of a tricky one it's one i struggle with and had to actually email back and forth a little bit in the end, I went with amateur built, which basically means that you're using a range of parts, you're building it by yourself and you're building it for yourself. Um, rebuilt and the other one, vehicle manufactured using parts of a registered vehicle, uh, or if the parts were kind of originally designed to be together, um, which these parts aren't, they're kind of from all sorts of different sources. Um, and also the other thing, I think if it's rebuilt, that suggests that you're doing it for someone else. Um, again, it's all linked down below. Go check out the document um, for the exact definitions. But yeah, amateur built if you're doing 
kind of thing like I'm doing. Then obviously, is the vehicle built from a kit? No, it's not. Um, even if you've bought kind of like an e-bike kit with the battery, the motor, the controller, throttle and all that, I would still put that it's not built from a kit. Simply that there's no kind of official guidance or warranty or manufacturer um, for all of them. It's all from different places just sold as a kit. Um, and also like the brakes and the frame are from different places. So that's kind of if you're doing like a kit car where it all comes together, everything you need, um, which is not what I'm doing. So I put no for that. Um, is it a specialised vehicle built from the ground up? Yes, it is. Um, again, if you were building, if you already had the chassis maybe or something, um, again, you'd have to email if that was the case for you. Um, but I've just put yes because, you know, I've assembled everything myself pretty much. Um, does the vehicle have full bodywork? Um, no, it doesn't. Uh, mine is basically the frame and then everything else put on it. There's nothing covering up um, the outside. Um, that would mean if you have, you know, fenders and panels and um, like a tank on the top or something, um, which let's be honest, most um, self-built bikes like this won't do. And that's probably more for the kind of kit cars, tricycles, quad bikes, all that kind of stuff. Moving on, we have date of manufacture. Um, I just put this as roughly when I kind of finished building it, uh, which is February 2022. Yes, it's taken me this long to get round to uh, getting onto everything. Um, and then date of manufacture of engine, I put when I bought the motor, which was April 2019. Uh, for my previous e-bike, so it's been going for quite a while now. Um, seems to be a perfectly good motor. And uh, next, we're still on section three here, which is all about the um, the vehicle details. Um, obviously, electric for the um, engine type. Um, it's not any of the others, and it's an automatic. Um, there are no gears, and there's nothing to do with that that could be changed. So yeah, I just put automatic. Now the next bit is where you can clearly tell it's been designed for petrol vehicle applications and not much thought has been put into electric because um, they're mandatory questions but there's no real answer for electrics like engine capacity, well it is zero. Um, I think it tells you to put that in the guide but that's generally what you put for electric on forms and stuff. Um, and again fuel tank capacity in litres, well zero because there isn't one. Um, now for the engine motor maximum output power, um, I'm going to put my units in kilowatts because um, that's what electricity is generally measured in for these kind of vehicles. Um, you could convert it to horsepower but don't bother. <laughs> um, and because it's a moped, I've put 4 kilowatts which is the legal limit um, of where a moped becomes a motorbike, um, anything above 4 kilowatts but what it doesn't specify um, is whether it's continuous or peak. Now on here it says maximum, so I'm assuming that means peak, um, but I've also read that um, they don't test the power um, and that sometimes it can be continuous power, which is the power measured over a span of time, say like half an hour or something, um, as long as the average power is beneath four, then that's okay. But what I'm going to do is limit the Sabaton down to 4 kilowatts, so there's no way it can output any more than 4 kilowatts. And if they do test it, then I'm covered basically. Now, maximum power engine speed in RPM. Um, I put this as the speed that the motor will spin at 28 miles an hour, which again, that's the legal limit for what a moped can do. Um, and for this bike, it's round about 400 um, RPM. I did some calculations and that's what it comes out as. Um, obviously, with a normal engine, the engine speed doesn't necessarily correlate to the speed of the vehicle because you've got different gears. Um, but because this is direct drive, um, I just worked it out that way. Um, so yeah, for a 3T motor on an 18-inch rim, it works out as 400. Uh, but you're going to have to check that depending on what bike you're doing. Um, and then, yeah, next question, maximum road speed. Uh, you have to put 28 miles an hour, else it won't go through as a moped. So 4 kilowatts, 28 miles an hour is what a moped is allowed to do. So I thought, why not just put the maximum for everything? Um, again, I don't think they test it 
but I'm covered if they do. Now, moving on to the weight, um, for electric vehicles, they actually split up the weight of the batteries and the weight of the rest of the bike. And I use a set of weighing scales to measure the front wheel and then the back wheel and add them together to get the total weight, uh, which was 68 kilos. Um, and I know the weight of the batteries, A, because I measured them when I was putting them in, and B, in the data sheet, um, each cell is around 500 grams and there's 28 of them. So it's about 14 kilos plus the weight of the kind of bus bars and stuff. So I put down it weighs 15 kilos. I mean, there's no way they're taking the batteries out to weigh them at the test, but um, yeah, split that up. So 15 kilos for my batteries, um, which means the unladen weight goes down is 53 kilos for the frame, suspension, handlebars, tires, wheels, all that kind of stuff. Um, good to vehicle payload and the axle weights, I just left blank because that doesn't apply. Um, and then the last bit about the build of the bike they want is um, about the brakes. Um, I do not have any kind of ABS or anything. That's way beyond what I was looking to do with this bike. So I just put no and link braking again, no. Um, that means that if you pull one of the levers, it actually operates both the front and the back brake. Um, so they're linked together. Uh, I'm sure you can get some kind of levers that will do that, but I don't have that. So again, I just put no. Um, and at the time of doing this test, there's a whole COVID section, um, which you just have to read through. Um, and then finally, sign and date on the back um, for the print name and everything, um, just to say that the vehicle will be as according to the guideline as best as you can, and the manual, the all 200 pages of it, um, and that you know, you're gonna turn up on time and all that stuff. And then finally, the payment, um, it's £85 for a test in in working hours, they call it, which I think is nine to five during the week. And then anything at the weekend is £105, I believe, but it's quite a big increase to get it done at the weekend. So I'm going to try and get mine done during the week. Now, I've managed to get a test um, and the way it works is that once you've filled out this form, um, you have to upload it to the website to um, apply for a test slot. So you go to this website, which is on screen now, um, and yet yeah, you upload your um, copy of the Minister's Approval um, application, uh, fill out your details, again, put in your email, and you send that off. And soon after that, you'll get an email um, acknowledging the receipt of the application. Um, and it'll say that they're processing it, which basically means they're looking over the application um, and seeing basically what you've applied for. And if it's all been okay, you'll then get an email um, accepting the application. Um, if you had any details that didn't quite add up in your document, um, like if you put the power higher than what a moped was allowed, um, I think this is the point where they get back to you and query that, um, and then you'd have to resubmit it. But luckily, mine went straight through. And once you get that, there's a phone number on the email for you to call um, where you can actually book the time and date of the test. Um, I called up in advance and just checked what kind of dates were available before applying. Um, so I knew that there'd be something roughly in the, in the area. And then, yeah, you get another email confirming all of that and basically saying, turn up um, at this time at this place. Um, and we'll assess it. So that's where I'm up to at the moment. Uh, we have a bike, we have a VIN, we have an application, uh, we have a test. So yeah, um, next step is obviously taking it down for the test and seeing what happens. And in terms of time scales, I think it was about two weeks between submitting the application and hearing back, uh, which is fairly standard from what I've heard. And when I first called up about test availability, they were quoting about three weeks in advance there about um, at the time I called. Um, so yeah, you should be able to get a test within a month, but I would advise planning ahead. Uh, I think they told me that they released tests about two months in advance. Um, so yeah, you're looking to plan about between one and two months um, in advance. And obviously not many people have done this. Um, I think I only know of two people, obviously Andy Kirby one and another guy who I've seen on Facebook, his project, that have actually got these kind of bikes um, through the UK MSBA as electrics. So I don't know how easy it's gonna be, um, 
but yeah we're going to go for it and thank you for all of you for sticking around i know it's become quite a long drawn out project at this point uh, but yeah uh, it's kind of a sideline project i've got lots of things going on at the moment but i will keep you updated and hopefully get this bike on the road in the not too distant future so i hope this has helped anyone who's either interested or actually going through the application process um, do let me know down below if you've got any questions about any particular section i'll be more than happy to help and yeah thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one